99.99. We're here to take your call. Nights, weekends, 24 7. Remember, it's all nine. 999.99.99. Like and follow News 1226 on Facebook for the latest up to date coverage near you. From the station that's on your side, News 12, first at 5, continues. And we begin now with new details just in about what's next for Columbia County's split from the Augusta Judicial Circuit. We have just learned a judge has deemed the split constitutional and the county can move forward after the 15th. Our Celeste Springer was in court all day today listening to witnesses, to the evidence, to the arguments about all this. Celeste, what's the latest? What can you tell us? Rob, the Superior Court judge on the case, said from the start that the Supreme Court was asking for this case to be resolved quickly, and today she said she was out to do just that. Now, the major basis behind the suit was that the split was racially motivated uh, after Jared Williams was elected. The plaintiffs argue the votes of Columbia County will be nullified if a new district attorney is appointed for them. Though the legal representation for the state of Georgia said they had purchased the tax Slayer building, or Columbia County more so, had purchased the tax slayer building to hold a district attorney before the election. They also argued Senator Harold Jones, who is black, voted yes on the bill and supported a split. Both sides presented their evidence and questioned witnesses. One of the plaintiffs on the case, Willie Saunders, took the stand. To do everything that was required to cast that vote, and then at the not have that vote count um, is tantamount to being three fifths of a person. And an attorney representing Saunders tells us they plan to appeal, and if they do do if they do appeal, that will go to the Georgia Supreme Court. Coming up at six o'clock, I'm working on a full story about all of this, hearing more about what people said in front of the bench, and also taking a look at what the plaintiffs called bombshell evidence. It's the text message from Representative Barry Fleming. But for now, this judicial split gets the green light. Celeste Springer, thanks for following this story for us from Columbia County. Time now to talk weather. Let's check in with the first little chief meteorologist, Riley. From the station that's on your side, this is News 12 at 6 o'clock. Well, it is enough to make your skin crawl. Nearly 20 snakes found in one Augusta home. Here why the owner thinks they picked her house to take over. Plus, what started as a missing persons case, now a murder investigation. What we know about the disappearance of Alfonso Green and the suspects now charged with his death. The first up this evening, a decision comes down on Columbia County's split from the Augusta Judicial Circuit. A Superior Court judge just deciding this afternoon the split is constitutional and can move forward. Our Celeste Springer live from the Augusta Richmond County Judicial Center with what happens from here. Celeste. Laura, the split can move forward on July 15th, but lawyers tell me even though things in there wrapped up, for them, things are far from over. It all came down to whether the judicial split is unconstitutional and whether black votes were ignored, a decision long awaited. The plaintiffs argued the split is not fair to Columbia County voters since Governor Kemp chose their district attorney instead of District Attorney Jared Williams, who won the election. The fact that I can go through all of the requirements uh, to be a voter, to do everything that was required to cast that vote, and then at the end not have that vote. Plaintiffs later brought in what they called a bombshell. They presented a text message from Representative Barry Fleming allegedly bringing up the topic of a split just a day after Jared Williams won. Though representatives for the state of Georgia argued Augusta commissioners signed off on the split and the commission is majority black. They also said Jared Williams will still take office and nothing in the bill prevents people from voting. And with final arguments, Judge Grubb says SB 9 is constitutional. And one of the lawyers representing one of the plaintiffs tells me they have every intention to appeal. If they do appeal, that will go to the Georgia Supreme Court. Okay.
say, still a long way to go, it sounds like. They are not planning on letting this rest quite yet, Celeste. Thank you. Much more news ahead, but first, let's have a lot. His indictment is now in the hands of the governor. Governor Kent must now wait 14 days to appoint commissioners for the review panel. That group will then have 14 more days to review the indictment and hand down a recommendation to the governor. New developments this evening in the case of a missing man from Richmond County. In just the last few hours, the Bonneville County Sheriff's Office charging three suspects with his murder. Our Flono Cone has a first look at the suspects and what led up to their arrest. I'm here at the Barnwell County Sheriff's Office, where officials said the case of Alfonso Green is still open and ongoing, but here's what we know so far. Over the weekend, Barnwell County Sheriff's Office arrested 29-year-old Abura Dunbar, 24-year-old Tezzy Crony, and 17-year-old D'Angelo Moffite. Today, they were charged with the premeditated murder of Alfonso Green. Over the weekend, the Sheriff's Office found a car in Allendale County with human remains inside. They have yet to release any more details about it or if it's related to Green's case. But Alfonso Green lived in Richmond County. He had been missing since June 27th and was last seen on Ballpark Road. According to the warrant, that's where he was killed. A day after Alfonso's disappearance, his son turned himself in on murder charges, connected to the death of Eddie Mathis, also killed on Ballpark Road. The sheriff's office called in helicopters, DNR dogs, and deputies to search for Green. The family even put up a $10,000 reward. But now that reward will go unclaimed as family and friends prepare for a funeral instead, not the ending they had hoped for. We'll make sure to update you on the latest as more information develops. In Barnwell County, Sono Cone on your side. The Richmond County Sheriff's Office is releasing this new photo of a woman who's been missing for more than a week now. Deputies tell us Rangina Baraksai was last seen July 3rd on Wheeler Road in the area around Big Oak Park. They say she suffers from several mental conditions. And it's possible she was working at a bar on Broad Street before her disappearance. If you have any information on where she could be, call investigators. That number is right on your screen. Happening now, leaders in Grovetown getting ready to talk about raising the minimum wage for their city employees. Mayor Gary Jones says the city wants to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour, and they found a way to do that without raising taxes. City Council's meeting starts in the next half hour over at City Hall in Grovetown. You can head there in person to hear more about the plans or watch their stream online. A reminder, the city of Augusta also considering a $15 minimum wage. More progress today in the dredging project at Lake Olmstead. You can see behind me crews lifting a dredger from the upper part of the lake to move it down to the lower part. We're told most of the dredging in the upper part is now complete. All of this is to help clear up that toxic algae you might have seen if you have to kayak through that mess that's grown over time. The deadline to finish this project is around this November. But crews out there today tell us they're already starting to see some real improvement in the water quality. So that is good news. We're also hearing back from the Savannah River Keeper after they found high levels of E. coli in three popular water spots last week following the hurricane uh, that kind of dodged our area but left its effects. They issued water quality alerts for the Augusta Canal, the Fifth Street Marina, and also Betty's Branch boat wrap, ramp. So we asked if levels are back to normal yet. We're told they'll have a better idea about that by tomorrow. In the meantime, the River Keeper, keeper says do not drink the water. If you do get in, make sure to rinse off. Also tomorrow, the city of Augusta expects